Hello everyone. In today's Hollow Scene profile, we're gonna be doing is Tasmanian emu. It's an extinct subspecies of emu. It was found in Tasmania, where it become isolated during the late Pleistocene, as opposed to other obscure emu taxa. The King Island Emu and the Kangaroo Island Emu, the population of Tasmania was sizable, meaning that there were no marked effects of small population size as in other two isolated isolates. The Tasmanian Emu had not progressed to the point where it could be considered a distant species. And even its state status as a distant subspecies is not universally accepted as it agreed with the mainland birds and measurements and the external characters used to distinguish it. A whitish instead of black feathers. Four neck and throat and an unfeathered neck. Apparently, they also present armpit, arm, albit rare in some mainland birds. There are suggestions the bird was slightly smaller than the mainland emu, but in conflict. Other evidence, including descriptions of Pleistocene remains, indicates that they both are similar in size. For its distribution and habitat, there is much evidence to suggest the Tasmanian emus were abundant in Van Diemen's Land, John Latham's 1823, publication of forms, Charles Jeffrey's observation, which he claimed the mobs of emus were common and um, the mob would consist of 70 to 80 birds. The Sydney Gazette in 1803 painted an image of Van Dorp Dam's land landscape when it reported the arrival of Lieutenant Brown on the Lady Nelson. Close to the settlement are abundance of emus, large kangaroos, and swans. In 1804, it was reported that David Collins' expedition found that the emus plentiful in 1808. George Harris, the surveyor, traveled from Hobart Town to Launceston and wrote that his party walked through the finest country in the world. The quantity quantities of kangaroos, emus, and wild ducks we saw was incredible. And here the distribution of the Tasmanian emu. The Tasmanian indigenous people su 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 sustainable relationship with the emu also should suggest emu population numbers were significant. significant. Indigen <clears throat> indigenous people used a subs substance called patenaire 
Sorry for mispronouncing the name. This omelet was made from ground metal mixed with emu fat slash oil and was used to mark their heads and bodies. In 1831, Robinson described an aboriginal dwelling stating that the ground in front of this hab habitation was thickly strawed with feathers of emu and the bones of the stately bird covered the ground which the natives had broken to pieces to obtain the marrow to anoint their head and body now now relationship with humans at a ceremony at cape grim on april 14th 1834 aboriginal people danced and characterized emus by stretching out one arm to em emulate the long neck of the bird the Tasmanian emu was also symbolized in indigenous art. The, the depictions of the emu in native drawings is noted in the narrative of the overland. Journey of Sir John and Lady Franklin from Hobart to Macquarie Harbour in 1842. The area where they were referring to was subsequently called Painter's Plains. The emu's representation in ceremonial activities and art suggests a great familiarity with the emu and many further support the notion of its abundance in Van Diemen's Land, the provocation of places in Van, Van Diemen's Land, named after the emu, also indicates the plentiful existence of the species. Henry Hellier, the surveyor for the Van Diemen's Land Company, came across a river and seeing the footprints of the emu, on some moist ground by the water called it emu river or emu bay takes its name from the river there are also emu bottom emu valley emu flat emu hill emu ground emu heights emu plains and emu point jeez why so much why so much name after what environment or what type of habitat there was also an emu inn in hobart as early as 1823 and later the emu tavern in liverpool street harbour Bart and for the extinction well remains a mystery don't know the answers Now, Extinction 1, Hunting. The Tasmanian emu was, as were the mainland birds, hunted as a pest, but more likely for food while settlers used guns to hunt emus. The emu's speed 
meant guns were not necessarily effective hunting weapons on their own. But the introduction of the domesticated dog changed this. It was so revolutionary that the, the introduction of dogs should be considered a major contributing factor to the extinction of the Tasmanian emu prior to the arrival of Europeans. Van Diemen's land did not have domesticated dogs, nor were dingoes ever present. Other than humans, the only other species to hunt the emu was the Tasmanian tiger or thylacine, which was an endurance hunter with a tenacity to track and tire its prey. In contrast, larger hunting domesticated dogs with greater speed and size had a form formidable impact. Two grass fires. In addition to practice to setting fires to grasslands and shrublands to aid in claiming land for agriculture deprived the birds of habitat. The subspecies became extinct around 1850, but this date is not very precise. Mainland birds were introduced after the demisation, disappearance, and possibly even when the last birds of the Tasmanian subspecies were still around, therefore hybridizing them out of existence. But the history of emu introductions of Tasmania is not significantly documented to allow a more precise dating of the disappearance of Demiensis. Rather, a site recorded in 1865 and captive specimens that died in 1873 were of this subspecies is not known with certainty. Three fences. Fences had been blamed for causing a reduction of emu numbers in mainland Australia due to injury occurred when an emu collides with the fence. It is highly probable that fences had the same effect in Tasmania. While it's difficult to provide absolute evidence, an article published by Peregrine in the Mercury supports this claim, stating that emus could not jump fences and tended to pace, tended to pace along the fences until they find they could find an opening. Otherwise, they would stay behind the fences. Could the fences actually represent a larger issue relating to the land used and greater competition between the emu and the sheep and cattle for land, food, and resources? The emus in Van Dysman lands probably needed fertile and sheltered land for reproduction on the scale that would maintain their population. The process of farmers taking over, clean, clearing, and enclosing stretches of land could have had a detrimental impact on emu populations by limiting the amount of land available for the emu to flourish. And for the last one, 
invasive rats. Another theory suggests that invasive rats could have contributed to rapid extinction of the Tasmanian emu. The extinction theory is based on historical documents that reference Tasmanian Aboriginal people talking about goanna eggs being eaten by rats. Tasmania does not have goannas. Therefore, suggesting that this was a mistranslation of goanna in Aboriginal word for emu. The Tasmanian emu is now extinct. In 1865, according to Australian Species Profile and Threats Database, this was officially recorded in 1997 when changes to listing of nationally threatened species saw the Tasmanian emu added to the list of species presumed extinct. And that's it for the Tasmanian emu. Like and subscribe and see you later guys.